We will fight you from the mountains And we will fight you in the streets And we will fight you in the valleys You cannot take what isn't yours And we will fight your goons and lawyers And we will fight your Pinkertons And we will fight your bought off congressmen You cannot take what isn't yours So la da da la da 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 La da la da la da 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 la da 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 And we will take you from your mansions. We'll burn your towers to the ground, and you will reap the whirlwind that you so you cannot take. What isn't yours? So la da da la da 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 la da la da la da 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 la da 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 da. And we will fight you from our houses, and we will fight you in the streets. And we will fight you in the valleys You cannot take what isn't yours No, you can't take what isn't yours This is part two of our visit with Charlotte Muse and Patrick Daly and if you really enjoy these interviews, there's a long form. If you go to lofilounge.net and across the top, you'll see a bar and it'll say Poem House. If you click on Poem House, the full one hour interview will come up and you get to see uh, all six segments with all, all the poems and all the discussion. It's, I think it'll be worth your while. Hello, folks. Uh, welcome to the Lo-Fi Lounge. Charlotte Muse and Patrick Daly. But we have two books that are a pleasure to have read and, and have some questions about. One is um, In Which I Forgive the River. That's by Charlotte Muse. Grief and Horses by Patrick Daly. Well, maybe I'll read Stradivari's Ghost. Oh, okay. the future. This was during my violin period, I'd say. <laughs> um, so Stradiv everybody knows who Stradivari was. Stradivari's ghost speaks to the future. Well, maybe I'll read Stradivari's ghost oh, yeah, okay. to the future. This was during my violin period, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> um, so Stradiv everybody knows who Stradivari was. Stradivari's ghost speaks to the future. Look for me through the murky water of the years. The sun comes in like a distant fire. One of the fish in a school is me. Or imagine my shape as a cello, if you like, with a shirt hung on it, then arms, then legs. Use any face you want, nobody ever painted mine. Can you hear me? I will call to Francesca or to one of the children. Listen. I'll test an instrument. Listen. I'm sitting on my bench in the roof, on the roof in fine weather, sh surrounded by shavings. Below is the din of Cremona. Do you see my tools laid out, the violins wet with varnish drying on a rack? I'm only asking you to imagine what you yourself have heard and seen. A man at work with his chisels and planes, his patterns, his woods, his hands, his ears. 
Each decision means work, refusals, time, the wearying demands of perfection. I made perfect things. I made violins which hold the whole world. But I beg you now, imagine a life for me, the way Francesca could say Antonio so that I heard nothing else. The mornings when we stayed in bed until the children climbed in laughing. Days with the sun on the river and birds flying. Please let me live for a moment before I return to the tower of my name. I was a man until I turned to music. Hmm. Jeez. Go ahead, Patrick. No, I think I think that's a that's a poem about about art and about um you know, all artists, I think, in some corner of their soul, yearn for fame and for, you know, a name that endures. Um, and um, I think this poem captures beautifully how how much we don't want that. <laughs> you <know? laughs> You've got to be trapped in something. Yeah. Trapped in, yeah. yeah. Did that challenge, uh, did you made the perfect thing, then... The, then all hell breaks loose. <laughs> yeah, right. Where is there to go now? <laughs> what have you done? Well, it's a little like Ernest Hemingway. He, said he was always looking for, he wanted to write the, the perfect sentence, or, you know, the sentence of a meaning. When he couldn't write the perfect sentence anymore, he didn't have any uh, reason to live. Yeah, I haven't written the perfect song yet, so I, I'm good. <laughs> uh, but for Patrick, uh, his grief and horses, and is a very, you know, is, is full of life, is full of animals, <laughs> dotted with animals. Uh, they tell our tale, uh, where you see the street person and the raven, and you pull those two things together, and and you know, they swirl together in this poem. The the poem, another crow. This is um, this is actually one of my favorite poems of, of mine. Me too. <laughs> Another crow. It lifted itself from a branch and flew and settled. How black it shone against the gray of not yet spring, stark as the bare tree. For a wing beat, I felt myself pitching into crow, all the not enough that is bird in me, wanting to fan out into black, to feel the inklings of blackness prickle my veins, while a black beak began to refine my bones. How strong longing is. I was ready to let go and take that cold, bright, prying grip upon the world just across the road in one beat and glide to stretch wings at the tip like aching fingers and stall and settle. For three moments of flight, I would have ceased this human leaning into otherness and leapt into crow forever. And though I was not bird enough, too much a man waiting for a bus under low cloud, I felt my balance tip crowwood by a feather, a tickle of black brilliance, something light as a shadow across my heart. I, I love that poem too. I, you know, I, I just think it's, um, it, it is, as you say, like almost, almost a, a, an eerie um, sort of synthesis. I mean, to someone whose imagination can go in, you know, who, who can almost turn into crow. Right. Um, I, I just think it's a very daring and wonderful image. Uh, I, I, I love that poem. <laughs> it, but I, I, and I think it's the whole book has these kind of series of transformative moments to where you're entering in, uh, whether it's the jam, <laughs> <It's on. laughs> whatever it is it keeps you keep being you know drawn into being the other and I, that's why i love that poem it's this one sentence that says why it may not be possible you know it says, i'm not burnt enough 
to completely make this transformation. But it, is it important to join the other, Patrick? Is it important to do? Well, of course, there's a there's an irony in the poem in that while I'm saying, you know, I would have ceased this human leaning into, into other, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm wanting to be a crow. Right. Um, and so, you know, I'm saying, well, the only way to, the only way to go is to become a crow and I, and I can't. And I think without, I hope, being pompous, there is something about the human condition in that. We are homo sapiens sapiens. We know that we know. Um, but we can't, except when we can in some ways, but we can't transform ourselves. We can't, you know, the animals in Charlotte's book uh, the men who become bear. She didn't read that one. Maybe, right. maybe, maybe we'll have time. And, and no, we'll, let's do it. We'll do it for sure. Yeah. Um, those men do become, but they're they're terrible. You know, in, right. in at least in that story and in 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 the Charlotte's poem, um, it's a terrible thing to. So, I I think it is as as creatures we are we are we are entirely trapped by our curiosity and yet trapped is wrong because that's that's curiosity is a wonderful thing it's it's mm -hmm. what makes us want to learn about the world um and it what what perhaps makes us of value to the world if you know if we can get past all the the, the enormities that we commit upon the world um our our genuine curiosity which is perhaps close to love like Charlotte's Mountain, um, that not only might save us, but it might it might save the world. But anyway, um, that's that's straying. There is one thing that I wanted to say about that poem, which I think maybe is of interest um, to other people who you know who write and or um, create any form of art. I wonder if this is generally true. That poem was relatively easy to write, but it came right after a poem that I'd struggled with for months and that never never really worked and was never really good. And it's completely different from this. And then um, and then I wrote this, as I say, and, and by at least by my standards, I don't write easily. Um, by my standards, that, that, that was a relatively easy poem to write. So I wonder if that's something, there's something true about the, the creative process there that you're, you're, you know, you put huge effort into something um, that may or may not be successful, um, but it, it enables the next thing. disrespect and bad things that have happened because of my association with Cracker. This is a good <laughs> one. I saw the uh, soldiers from uh, 29 Palms heading out to deployment and uh, I got this out of there. I think a lot about the soldiers and who knows. Filled with flattery 
new host in tight shirts with compliments for soldiers and ghosts. Up on the high ground, blowing their loads for the cowgirls left back home. How can you say there's nothing to lose? Singing your broken parakeet blues on the side of the highway, lighting the fuse. Black like the crows from the cattle car fumes. Yeah, up on the highway, near 29 palms, I saw busloads of soldiers rolling along. And people like crows on the side of the road, waving goodbye to their lovers and sons. The soldiers were boys, they were brown ones and fat ones, white ones. Sweet ones and cruel ones, but I didn't see anybody I thought that had money like me. Some were sleeping, some dreaming, some quietly weeping. I had 29 palms. The buses kept creeping right through the desert and out to the shore. 29 palms won't see them no more. How can you say? There's nothing to lose Singing your broken parakeet blues On the side of the highway Lighting the fuse Black like the crows from the cattle car fumes How can you just wait farewell to them Knowing what you know and where you have been On the side of the highway Lighting the fuse and singing of the trees, up on the high ground where the soldiers would stand, cooling themselves in the sulfurous breeze, we all crowed those parakeet blues.
had when I was young in a home that the government had found her. And the place they found for me they called the great opportunity. Still I wish she could have died with me around her. Some kids got a beating, some kids went away. Sometimes I'd hear them leaving in the night. One time I saw Jesus standing outside in the rain. And he told me that I was going to be all Thanks. Nice.